Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome back to the Dean Show. Every week we're here trying to help you understand the most misunderstood way of life in the world, yet it's the fastest growing way of life in the world, and more women are coming to Islam than men. Islam is amazing, and we're going to be talking about it. It's the way of life of all the messengers of God, but how do I know it's the truth? There's a book out there. You can get it for free. It's called the Quran. It's the verbatim word of God. It's a living miracle. We attest to the miracles that Jesus did, that Moses did, but how do you verify these things today? The Quran posts a challenge. If you believe, if you feel it's from other than the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one God, go ahead, find one discrepancy. There's so many miracles in the Quran, and we're going to be discussing one of those here today with Dr. Lawrence Brown. When we come back, sit tight, don't go nowhere. It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. The problem is, yeah. is this, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshipping? Because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped God. Greetings of peace. Salaam alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. Dr. Brown, Dr. Brown, doc, time is short, and we want to get right into the topic. People can go to thedeanshow.com to read a little bit about you. We've done several shows with you in the past, and I really get excited working with you. Not only are you my brother, you're a good friend, and thank you for joining us here. Oh, my pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about the verbatim Word of God, the Quran. Now, we could talk on this for days, but we just want to kind of give people a taste just kind of give people, you know, a better understanding because we say it's the verbatim word of God. There's no other book like it. It tells you what the purpose of life is, where you're going when you die. It has so many things in there that anyone with an open heart and open mind, after they read it, after they look into it, they'd conclude like over 1.5 billion people that there's no way that this book could have come from a human being or a devil, but from the one God, the creator, the same creator of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and all the messengers of God. So in this short amount of time, we just like to to talk about, you know, the Qur'an. Do you think we can do this? Sounds good to me. So yeah. tell us, uh, what, what, what um, you know, we can espouse on many of the scientific miracles. We can espouse on how it's been memorized by millions like no other book. What do you feel is a, a very important point and, and, and something that would just have the light bulb come on if people reflect over it, you know? I, oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, there are so many of those. Uh, yeah. As you just mentioned, there are many lines of evidence. Okay. Uh, in uh, in my book, Godded, I basically address the innate appeal of the Quran, the miracle of the language of the Quran, how the Quran relates to previous events, contemporaneous events, future events, and then how it relates to the unknown. Um, scientific miracles that there was no possible way anybody in the world could have known those things, not only during the time of, of Muhammad, peace be upon him, but for a thousand years after, uh, but things which are accurately described in the Quran, which we now know as scientific fact. So there, there are many, many, many lines of evidence. <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's any way to say one is more stunning than the other. But I think that, um, I think one way of looking at it is this. Our Creator sent every prophet to make an impact on the people with his message, okay? Yes. And in order to do that, he gave the prophets a gift. He gave them something unique that made them stand out to the people that they were preaching to, okay? So for example, uh, Moses sent to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Um, in that culture, in that time, the, the thing that the people revered more than anything else was magic, sorcery, yes. basically. You know, Pharaoh was surrounded by his own magicians, his own sorcerers, and every town had, you know, the, the sorcerers you'd go to for this or for that. Um, that was the big thing of their age. And so it is not surprising to find that the signs that our Creator gave to, to Moses were the signs impressive to the people of that time 
where the feats of, we can't say magic, but the miraculous feats that he performed, you know, the, the staff turning into the serpent and things like this, defeated the sorcery of Pharaoh's court sorcerers. Now, this was a message to the people to show that this man was sent by our creator. In the same way, Jesus Christ was sent to a population of people. And in their culture, in their time, the greatest thing, the greatest skill a person could have was the skill of healing. Okay? And as we know, I mean, he healed the lepers, he cured the blind, he raised the dead, all by the will of Allah. We believe all of this. We believe, as Muslims, we believe all of this, but we believe that Jesus Christ did this as he said he did it, by the will of Allah. Not that he was doing it by himself. As he said, I of myself can do nothing. So that's the difference. Christians believe these miracles. We believe these miracles. Okay? But Christians put a different spin on the miracles. Yes. And they allow in their minds these miracles to elevate Jesus Christ. We continue to believe in Jesus Christ as the man and the prophet that he himself said he was. But just to go back to the point, so, you know, whereas Moses presented to his people with this unique attribute of uh, miracles beyond what they could perform, Jesus Christ was presented to his target population, so to speak, with an ability that surpassed that of any other human being, the ability to heal. Um, now, the Arabs. The Arabs were the population to whom the revelation of the Holy Quran came first, right? Revealed through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What was the skill that they revered more than anything else? It was language. You know, the, the, the eloquence and the impact of language. So many scholars say that the greatest miracle of the Quran is not the scientific miracles. It's not the, it's not the fact that the Quran uh, corrected misconceptions about the past not the fact that the Quran spoke of events of the present in, in a way that could not, could not have been done except through divine knowledge, not the fact that the Quran spoke of future events that would take place with, with accuracy, again, something that could not be done except with, by the will of Allah. None of these things. The greatest miracle of the Quran was the language. The language. The language. I mean, th I mean think of this. The Quran is revealed in ten readings in seven different dialogues. And dialects. Ten readings, seven different dialects. Now, we have to understand how the Quran was revealed. We have to understand the eloquence of the language. Um, and when you put the entire package together, which is very difficult to talk about just as we're talking now, but we can touch on it. When you put the entire package together, you just come to realize that this is not something that could have been constructed by a human mind. Let's, let's, can you hold your point there? And we're going to just take a break. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. He is the maintainer. He is the you say that you do not believe in Jesus. You have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to believe in and love Jesus Christ. Why is it then when it comes to one of the most important decisions in life, we literally abuse ourselves? It's not that the main thing we're looking for is to see what type of money he has so that he can treat my daughter like a princess. It's not about that. Back here on The Dean Show, we're talking to Dr. Lawrence Brown. We're talking about the verbatim Word of God, the Qur'an. Please, continue on where you left off. Okay. My head is kind of swimming because I almost don't know where to start. But, I mean, let's just begin by saying that, you know, the desert Arabs, the Bedouins were, I mean, they were tough people. And yet, uh, they prized language so much that they would have contests. They would have contests on poetry, contests to you know, to show who is the most eloquent. And there were huge prizes given to those who were honored as, as the winner of, of these contests. Um, and yet, when the Quran was revealed, it subjugated the Arabs in their own language. What, what do I mean by that? I mean, for example, um, Allah challenged mankind in the revelation to produce another Quran like it, you know, just uh, basically saying, if this is not from God, 
produce one like it. Nobody could. So Allah lowered the bar and made it easier. And in another revelation, later in the Quran, Allah challenged the people not to produce an entire you know, Quran, but just to produce 10 surahs like it. Again, when the greatest poets, the greatest, uh, you know, the greatest artisans of the language of that time could not do this, Allah lowered it again to the point where he challenged mankind to produce just one surah, one surah like that of the Quran. Now, the shortest surah in the Quran is 10 words, 10, 10 words. Okay, uh, Allah was challenging mankind from that time until this to produce something like it, only 10 words long. And nobody has ever been able to do that. Now, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean? What, for, you know, we know the Quran is in Arabic. You know, was that open to anybody in the Persian language, English language to this day? Or does that mean in Arabic? And what does that mean? Can you elaborate on this a little more? It's a challenge to mankind, to all of mankind, not just to one person. I mean, you get your friends together and sit around and try to come up with a, a ten-word, you know, saying that, uh, that exceeds the Quran in eloquence and impact and meaning. Mm -hmm. It's never happened. Never, never. In 1400 years. Now, you have to understand a few things. First of all, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was illiterate. Mm -hmm. He could not read. He could not write. This is a historic so, fact. No, this is a historic fact. Non-Muslims yeah. attest to this. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is well known. So, to begin with, the, the whole scenario just sounds unbelievable, that mm. the greatest work of eloquence was revealed through a man who was illiter illiter illiterate to begin with. Boy, I was almost becoming, <laughs> uh, you know, illiterate there. But, um, you know, it's almost unbelievable just on the face of it. But then, you know, in addition, we have to, we have to keep in mind that it just doesn't make human sense. I mean, the disbelievers say that that Muhammad spoke from his own mind, right? Look, the greatest artisans in all time see the mistakes in their work better than anybody else. Michelangelo would never have said, he would never have challenged anybody else to carve a greater statue. I mean, he was his own greatest critic. The reason why you find a lot of Michelangelo's statues with arms broken off legs broken off is because there was a period of time when he once went into his workroom and he smashed his own statues with his own hammer. Okay? You would never expect Beethoven or Mozart to challenge somebody to write better music. You would never expect Rembrandt or any of the great painters to ch challenge somebody to paint a greater painting. Why? Because throughout time, artisans, even the highest, even the most accomplished artisans, always saw the fallacies in their work better than anybody else, mm -hmm. okay? It is, not a, it is not a human characteristic to challenge other people to outdo you when you know that you can be outdone. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you know, for, for this challenge to, be had, to have been made in the first place could only have been a challenge made by God. No man would ever have been so foolish as to say, write 10 words better than mine and you will disprove that this is revelation. No man would ever say that. It's, it would be craziness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and w would this be, I mean, really, the people at that time, you know, who are masters of the Arabic language, they really even more saw us that many people who don't know the Arabic, they even appreciate this more? You know, even in the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, the disbelievers, those who, those who refused the message, they would still, at night, when it was dark, they would still sneak to where they could hear the Quran being recited to listen to it because of its beauty and because of its impact. There was a famous story where three of the greatest uh, antagonists to Muhammad, three of the greatest enemies to Islam, bumped into one another at night coming home from one of the Quran recitals. Yes. And they they caught one another, one another at it and you know, basically said, what are you doing? You know, well, okay, yeah, well, I was there. 
So they agreed not to do it again. The next night, in the dark of night, the, the Quran recital finished. They bumped into one another again in the dark. This time, they swore by their gods never to come back. And the next night, they bumped into one another again. That is how powerful the impact of the Quran was upon the Arabs who understood its message. Even though they were disbelievers, even though they were opposing the message, they were so drawn by it that they would sneak out at night to listen to it. Even when they had been you know, previously caught two nights in a row. Amazing. Yeah, before we go to a break, I mean, we see a lot of people, you're an author yourself, and, you know, many people, they write in, before in their introduction and preface, you know, they're apologizing for the mistakes that, you know, they might have made. Or you'll see, you know, the next book uh, 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 to that one coming up, you know, modifications, edits, revisions. But isn't it true that in the Quran, you know, the second chapter, many people have accepted Islam just because, you know, the boldness says this is a book where there is no doubt in it. No. Yes. Is this true? Dalik al kitabula raibathi. Yeah. I mean, where, where this is the book in which there is no doubt, to the best of my ability to, to translate the meaning. So yeah. it starts off telling you there's no doubt in this book. Yeah. That is a very bold statement. Exactly. And, and you're right. Many people have come to Islam because they have simply recognized no human being would ever have said that. Amazing. Amazing. It would, it would be too easily disproven if it were a human work. Definitely. We're going we're gonna to get into some more here on The Dean Show with Dr. Lawrence Brown talking about the verbatim word of God, the Quran. Sit tight. We'll be right back. The Dean. Everything. The, this cup is in sincere submission to the one who created it because it's following the rules of gravity. By definition, this is how we can say that Islam has been here since the very beginning of time. Anywhere the Muslims went to, people embraced Islam in masses, countries, nations. And this is something that is amazing, never happened on the face of earth. When people saw a practical way of life, of being truthful, being honest, making sense of everything that they do. They worship and they buy and sell. Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Lawrence Brown. So much to talk about. This is a vast topic. We're just touching about little details here and there. You mentioned the prophecies that are in there, you know, the scientific facts, the human development of the embryo, scientific, I mean, uh, facts that are confirmed, not theories. And tell us, there's a, so many points. Just touch upon this. Is it true that, look, uh, the Quran has been memorized by millions of people all over the world, and if you were to take all the religious scriptures, and if you were to uh, burn them, throw them in the ocean, get rid of them, there is no other religious scripture that you would be able to bring back the way you'd be able to bring back the Quran because of this yeah. memorization by children that are the age of seven, eight, memorizing the whole book that's in the hearts of the people. And you made a story about some emperor, some king that was doing this, and then a child came and said, you can't get rid of the Quran, it's in our hearts, it's in my heart. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and uh, this is something, again, this is a challenge made to Islam. People say that, no, the Quran has been changed. But, no, it hasn't. Uh, the Quran was always maintained in the minds of the believers. And, and there's a, this beautiful word, hafith. Hafith Quran. Hafith Quran for memorizer of Quran, but hafith actually means protector. Protector of the Quran. In the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, there were thousands. There were thousands who memorized the Quran from the beginning to the end. So when, whenever anybody made a mistake in recitation, in prayer, or uh, just you know, in reciting, there was always somebody there to, to correct. Okay, when the Quran was committed to the Mus'haf, to the book, when it was written down during the time of Abu Bakr and Uthman, and we still have two copies okay, of, uh, of, the, of these originals, one in Tashkent and one in Istanbul. So to, these, to, the, to, this, day, to this day, the, uh, the believers have always protected the message by memorizing it here mm -hmm. more than on paper. On paper, it's easy, easy to make a slip of the pen. It's easy to, you're tired and, and, and you misspell something or, or something. But the, the believers, in the beginning, there were the thousands, after that, they became the millions. Uh, you know, now, now we have tens of millions, tens of millions of Muslims who have memorized the Quran from the beginning to the end. And 
you know, any, any error in the, in the Quran, they can identify it instantly and correct it. Amazing, amazing. I mean, is it also true on every page of the Quran, the verbatim word of God, God's name or his attributes are mentioned over and over, every page of the book. And also, is this true? And is it true that if you look at it with a sincere open heart and open mind, there's nothing that it calls you to but good, being good, doing good, you know, uh, the message of the Quran, if you can expose on this in the last few minutes, you know, uh, some people might say it's from the devil. So many points I want you to cover in a short little time that someone says it's from the devil. Every time we recite the Quran that has the name of God on every page, we seek refuge from the devil. Exactly. For God to protect us from the Quran. So these three points, is it true? Every God's name is mentioned on every page that we seek refuge from the devil when we recite this Quran and that everything the Quran calls us to is nothing but goodness. I mean, I, I, I can't really add anything to Please that. Please add something except, to it. Okay, the one thing I'll add, the one thing that I'll, that I'll add is you said that some Christians say, oh, this is from the Satan. But as you said, within the Quran itself, the Quran tells us that to seek refuge in Allah, our Creator, from Satan, the cursed one. And, you know, Christians, Christians quote from the Bible where, it said, where Jesus Christ is recorded as having said, that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. Okay? If Satan casts out Satan, well, here we have the Quran telling us to seek refuge in God from Satan. Okay? So if the Quran is from Satan, then Satan is casting out Satan. All right? So that, that's simply not possible. That, that's an impossible formula common sense, but also according to the scripture of the Bible, all right? So it's very clear that, you know, that can only be from God. This is amazing, amazing. We're out of time. If people want to get a hold of you, read some of your books, where can they get in touch with you at? Okay, the subject we're talking about now is from my book, Godded. Um, you can find all of my books on my websites, Level Truth. Dot com, just two words, no spaces, no underscores, no hyphens, just leveltruth.com. And you can also find eighthscroll.com, an action adventure I've written, eighthscroll.com. Thank you very much. Once again, may God Almighty Allah reward you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. And that was Dr. Lawrence Brown on The Dean Show. We just touched upon this very important topic, verbatim word of God. If somebody wrote you a letter, if you were really wanting to know who your father and mother was and there was a book out there describing them, you'd run to that book. There's no other book like it. You buy all the books from Barnes & Noble, Amazon. What about the verbatim of God? We're telling you it's from the creator of the heavens and earth, and you can get it for free. Call the number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Why wouldn't you just pick it up? Why wouldn't you just read it? It teaches you to be good. It teaches you to be kind. It doesn't teach you to kill innocent men, women, and children. It doesn't. It tells you the opposite, to be just, to speak a just word, to do everything that helps you to develop yourself to be the best human being that you can be. And the foundation is built on, check this out, on pure monotheism, worshiping only one God, not three in one, four in one, five in one, not a man or a monkey, not a woman, but the creator of everything in this universe is built on that, and it's something logical, rational, and it has all the testable evidence, but you've got to give it a shot. You give everything else a shot, give this a shot. And tune in every week to The Dean Show, until next time, peace be unto you. It's a way of life brought to us by the messenger, best of mankind. Show us the way to Allah's grace. This is the deen, deen of Islam. This is the deen, deen of Islam.